Hey guys, I wanted to get this out as soon as possible because Conquest is starting in literally less than two days and we just got a data mine of all the feats. Um, and I thought it would be really great if I could just show you what I'm planning on doing, what I'm planning on skipping and just kind of what I'm brainstorming on using. Obviously it's super rough. <laughs> Things will change as we get the discs, things will change as we get in there and see exactly what battles um, we have, what combats we've gotten and what teams we've gotten to face against. Um, so everything obviously is going to just be really um, subject, subject to change. I hate to use that term, but you know, it's kind of up in the air until you actually see what you're faced with. That being said, I think it's super important to kind of have a base guideline and to see that I genuinely do think you can get red crate. Um, I know a lot of people are worried about it because of the Inquisitor feats, but I think we're good. So I just wanna look at the feat list. So this is it here. I'm just gonna disappear for two seconds. Um, I'm not gonna go through all of this in detail. Excuse me, sorry. Um, but a lot of these feats are repeat feats. We've seen a lot of them before. We've seen similar ones to these ones before. Um, so we already kind of know what teams we can use. And I've made a rough list of what I would like to do in each sector. Um, so I wanna show you kind of what I'm thinking in terms of all of these feats. There are 39 total key cards that are Inquisitor related. And there are 37 key cards that you are allowed to quote unquote skip or drop um, in order to get the red crate. So there are 637 total. You need 630 to hit the red crate. Um, there is a boss or I shouldn't call it a boss node, but there is another node in addition after the sector five boss apparently. So instead of getting your data disc there that you usually get, they've replaced it with a node that you can actually do a fight on, um, which is why there are an ad additional three key cards that you can earn, which means you have an additional three key cards of wiggle room. So I am planning on skipping 21 of these for sure. Two of them are Inquisitor feats. So I'm planning on skipping the win 14 battles, which is in sector five with a full Inquisitor squad. Um, that's worth 15 key cards. I do not have the Inquisitor squad that is going to pull this off. So I'm not gonna do it. There's absolutely no way it's gonna happen. Um, in sector four, there is a boss feat worth four key cards that you have to win with a full Inquisitor team as well. Also not gonna be able to do that. Sector two on the mini boss, you need to win with Star Killer surviving, which is worth two key cards. And I don't have Star Killer, so I can't do that one. So right there, I'm already at 21 key cards that I'm not getting. Um, and then I'm either going to skip the purge feat or defeating, which is in sector four, or defeating 50 enemies with Inquisitorious units. I'm leaning towards defeating uh, 50 enemies. I think purge is actually going to be easier to pull off. Maybe we'll see. Um, and yeah, so that means I'm skipping 31 key cards right there intentionally. Uh, so let's look at kind of what I'm thinking in terms of teams that I want to use in general for each, um, for each feat. I'm not going to go over every single feat in here because some of them are very obvious. Like um, sector four, you need to win with Jedi Consular and Jedi Knight Guardians surviving on the mini boss. That That's what you need to do. I'm not going to come up with a team comp for you because it's all roster dependent. It's going to be disc dependent. There are teams that are very good for those, which I will show you. Um, but other than that, like a lot of them are just very obvious. And I want to focus on the ones that maybe are a little bit trickier. So Let's do that. So I made a list. I actually put it in my game properly um, and we can have a look. So I want to start with the global feats. So the first one that's worth 15 key cards, super simple. You don't even need to worry about it because you're going to do this naturally is defeat at least 500 enemies. You're going to do that as you go through, especially as you um, rack up the kills and everything like that. Okay. And Defeating enemies is not wins, by the way. So when you're timing out or when you're farming these kills or whatever it is you're doing, those are counting towards your enemies defeated. Um, in 
the global feats as well. You need to win 40 battles with Sith Empire, which is why I have this Darth Revan team up top. Um, and it's going to be actually able to double dip into many feats throughout the sectors. Um, so because this is a global feat to win with entire full Sith Empire squad, you can do it in any of the sectors. So if you have a weaker team, you can just hit sector one and repeat. It is annoying because it is 40 battles. I get that. Um, but it's worth 15 key cards. And because if you are planning to skip some of these Inquisitor feats like I am, you're going to have to do these 40 battles. And I know that sucks to hear, but I might as well tell you now. <laughs> so the other one that you're going to need to do is win 40 battles with Old Republic, which is why I put this one here. I'm probably going to take Candorous out. I haven't decided yet and put Jahani in or Mission. Honestly, it doesn't, I personally don't think it matters. I put Candorous there because he's strong. Um, I'm fully intending to do most of this in Sector 1. What I will tell you about both of these feats defeating 40 or winning 40 times with both of these teams you can do them um like i said in any sector your entire team does not need to survive okay so if you have um instead of candrus say you have to take jahani and she's gear eight she doesn't need to live she can kick off we don't care about her all you gotta do is get the win okay that's all that matters same idea with uh the sith empire squad the one thing that I will tell you is you need to do at least three of these a day right away. Okay. You, you're getting 40 wins within, with both of these squads within 14 days that averages out to just over three a day. Um, <clears throat> and you're going to finish on day 13 or day 14. You need to do it. I like to do one in the morning, one mid afternoon and one in the evening before bed. And I just cycle through. If I know I have those, um, battles that I have to get done in Conquest that I have to do at least one a day. I have to do it that way. Otherwise I forget. So that's just how I like to do it personally. If you want to do it differently, go for it. Um, but three a day on average is what you want to aim for. Okay. There is a feat where you need to win 20 battles with Darth Nihilus and Darth Sion present. This is just a rough team that I put together. Um, I wanted to do trail lead so that if I can find like a geo squad or anything where they're going to attack at a turn um, and kind of kill themselves or Mon Mothma or something like that. Great. Again, Nihilus and Scion don't need to survive. So you're looking at my year 12 characters and you're probably like, Sarah, you're not going to do this. It doesn't matter if they die. You just need to get the win. I put Revan and Malak there because there is a global feat as well where you need to kill um, 100 enemies with Malak or Darth Revan, which is why they're going to be tagging along for this. Cause I'm hopefully going to be able to get some kills with them. And you're going to want to get that feat done because you're going to get a really strong data disc out of it. And the faster you can get those kills, even better. So that being said, defeat 100 enemies is also a global feat with, with Revan and Malak. Um, it only gives you one key card, but it does give you the data disc dread, which is going to be really strong. It, it um, is going to be strong for your dark side teams, which because we have inquisitor feats, you're going to want that boost if you're going after it. And then you have a global feat when you equip the dread disc, where you're going to need to defeat 20 enemies with dread. And it sounds like it's going to be pretty straightforward to do that. Honestly, it sounds a lot like mass massively overpowered in the critical over disc that we had last conquest run, where you're just going to put it on, do a couple of battles and it'll be over. Um, there is a feat that you need to win 20 battles as well without using a leader in the leader slot. What I'm intending to do, honestly, is if I can find a team that works decently, I'm going to take these Old Republic and Sith Empire teams and I'm just going to switch the leader out. So I'm thinking Malak leader and Jolie for Old Republic. And then that way I'm still getting the full team feet done if I win, which I should if I'm in sector one, um, plus data discs, etc. And then I'm also getting a tick towards not having a leader in the leader slot. So again, Let's go, for example, Malik lead for Sith Empire there. That's a tick to no, no leaders, and you need to do 20 of them. That's a tick to Sith Empire that I need to do 40 of, and I'm only using one battle to do it. And then 
we can get into uh, sector one here because those are the feats for that. Um, winning with no leaders does give you another data disc. It gives you premonition, which you need to equip and gain foresight from premonition 20 times to get 15 key cards. So again, it's going to be one of those times where you just put the disc on, do a couple of battles and get the feet from it and walk away. Okay, so let's look at sector one. Okay, so in sector one, you need to defeat 50 enemies with old Republic characters. You don't need to win the battle for this. You just need to kill the characters. The easiest way to get this done is to use Jedi Master Luke as your leader um, and call your old Republic Jedi to assist because they'll get the kills and they'll do damage based off Jedi Master Luke's protection. Um, the reason why I have Grandmaster Yoda here is because there's also a feat in sector one where you need to infl attempt to inflict potency down 40 times and Yoda inflicts potency down on his basic. Important factor, you don't actually want to kill the character with Yoda. One, because if you're doing this team, you're gonna steal a kill from your old Republic characters. Um, but two, if you kill the character, you don't actually get credit for uh, potency down on that character. So you don't want to use him. Um, you don't want to call him to, to assist with, or you don't want to call him to do his basic with Jedi Master Luke's leadership ability because chances are he will just kill the character. That feat in particular is a lot of fun to do against Nest and it's particularly easy to do against Nest because she just stacks so much bonus protection. It's hard to chew through her um, and you can just keep stacking potency down over and over and over again. The reason why I also put him here is because there is a feat that you need to gain uh, health steal up 40 times. Um, so if you are going against characters that earn that buff, so Grievous, um, Palpatine, Empire teams can earn it. You can use Grandmaster Yoda to steal it and then spread it across your team. Um, so that is at least a, one way to do that one. Um, I do have another team for that below that you'll see, but... That team there is gonna get three feats theoretically with one, uh, which is why I put it there. If you don't have Jedi Master Luke, you can still do your old Republic kills without him. It's just a lot easier, obviously, uh, when you do have him there to use his leadership ability and call everyone. In almost every sector, let me just double check. In every sector, yes, in every sector, on the boss, with the exception of Sector 2, it's gonna be on the mini boss. You need to win without using any Jedi, Sith, or um, unaligned force users in your squad. One of the greatest ways to do this is with Bam lead, Han, and Chewie. Um, and the reason why this is a really strong team is if you have Volatile Accelerator and you have Bam's Leadership Zeta, you'll be able to pump out Term Meter really quickly. You're gonna want some Amplify Agony as well for this. And then you can just add two characters. And this is why it's even better is because when you get to those feats where you need to win with Jedi Consular and Jedi Knight Guardian surviving, you just tack them onto this team and if you have the right disc set up, you're able to go and the uh, opposite team usually doesn't even get to take a turn. So you win. They've survived, even though they're gear one, gear five, whatever you want them at. Um, and you'll get the bonus that way. Um, another team that I like to use that doesn't use any of those characters uh, is Rex lead clones with Chewy. Um, pretty straightforward. <laughs> they're just... There are none of those characters and it works really well uh, to get through the bosses. At least it has in the past. I fully anticipate it work, anticipate it working well again, um, especially with the discs that we're going to be getting. And then for health steal up, this is another team that I like to use. Uh, Palpatine lean with lead with Empire honestly does not matter who is on this team. Uh, other than Thrawn. And the reason why I like Thrawn here is because Thrawn's gonna pass the turn to Palpatine. He's gonna do his special that kind of steals health from all of his uh, allies, uh, his second special, and everyone on the team is gonna gain health steal up. So right away you are getting five from there. And again, this is a feat that you don't need to win for. So you can time out, you can do whatever it is that you need to do because it doesn't matter as long as you 
don't forfeit the battle, okay? You're either gonna lose or you're gonna time out, um, but you don't need to get the win. You just need to get the buff. Okay, um, and then the rest of the feats in sector one are pretty straightforward. Like I said, um, winning without using any Jedi, Sith, or unaligned force users. You're also gonna need to win without using any bounty hunters on your squad on the mini boss but then you need to win with Cad Bane and Aura Singh surviving. So again, it's the same thing where you need to do two battles on the boss nodes and the mini boss nodes because they're gonna make you do feats that oppose one another. They're gonna make you do feats that make you do it multiple times so you can't double dip, okay? Um, obviously, if you have a strong bounty hunter team, you're gonna be able to use Cad Bane and Aura on it. If you don't, that's another example where I would just plug them into this BAM team and go and they should survive, like I said, if you have the right disc comp. I like to save those feats until I've gone through the, all of the sectors in general, uh, just so I can get my disc, uh, my disc collection gathered up, and then that way I don't need to swap discs multiple times throughout. I can work on getting all of the feats with the discs I have equipped, swap my discs if needed, and then work on the other feats, and that way, if you need to do it, um, with certain discs and you're not getting them right away. You might get them later on in sector five and then you can go back to sector one and get these feats afterwards. Okay, so let's look at sector two because sector two has a lot of feats that are um, repeats. First one being defeat 50, dro 50 enemies with droid units. So Grievous wrecks this. And the reason why you're <laughs> I put Newt here is because with Grievous Newt, I have found you just walk through the sector. So you can walk, you can just go through battle after battle and he he just wrecks and he walks through it really easily. Um, it's a ton of fun and you're gonna get those kills really quickly that way. And again, you don't need to win for that. It's just defeating the enemies. But because this team generally does work so well, you can get through the, you can get through the combat nodes um, and you can win and make progress through the sector and then work on other feats at the same time. Okay, uh, win 14 battles with a full squad of light side units. Really simple <laughs> and straightforward. I'm not even gonna build a squad for that because you're gonna be able to cycle through different light side squads as you make your way through the sector. Um, scoring at least 200 critical hits is another one. So that's another repeat. I managed to get that one naturally. Um, the last conquest runs that we had and Grievous was a really big uh, help with that one. So highly recommend using him um, because you're gonna work on critical hits and you're gonna work on droid kills at the same time. And then attempt to inflict evasion down 40 times is your other feat. So I put here a Darth Revan Sith Empire team um, because Bastilla Sean has evasion down once her fear expires and this is gonna double dip to your global fee of needing to win Sith Empire battles. So if you can work on that a little bit while you're also working on evasion down, you're double dipping there. And then down here, I just put some other characters that have evasion down. So if you don't necessarily have a Sith Empire team to do it, um, or if you wanna work on it and work on Sith Empire team um, elsewhere, that's totally fine. Holdo has it with her AOE, Old Ben has it with his basic, Chupio has it with his basic, and Zam has it with her, um, I believe it's her second special that does it, and it's an AOE as well. So those are really, there are a ton of other ones as well, those are just the first ones that I thought of um, that you can kind of plug and play into a lot of squads. And then, like I said, this sector, I'm planning to skip the Starkiller feat, there's another Jedi, no Jedi, no Sith, no unaligned force users feat. Um, and then there is the sector three boss, which is going to have a really weird feat. And I haven't fully come up with a team for it yet, but I have ideas. Um, you need to win with five victors and victors happen based off of the boss modifier there. It's really weird in terms of how you get it, but essentially you, if you're a non leader, so, you would start with the, um, it's like a new 
buff or debuff or tag, it, it gives you one called duelist on your team and it gives you one on the enemy squad. If you defeat that person that has duelist, which you are, it's basically a forced taunt, then you claim victor and then you get duelist on another member of your team and another member of their team. Um, the idea here is to win with your entire squad having five victors. So you need to pass it around your team um, so that you're able to win with everyone surviving essentially um, and having five victors on your squad. So again, I haven't fully thought of what team I'm gonna use for that yet. I would love to see what the boss composition is gonna look like before I get there, but just so we know. Um, and then of course, because you're being forced to do things that juxtapose each other so that you do the boss battle twice. So if you have to win with five victors, the opposite here is to win with an undersized squad. So that's your other feat. Okay, so sector three, there are, this is where the Inquisitor feats are gonna start. So sectors three, four, and five have Inquisitor feats. I'm planning to skip sectors three and sector five, like I mentioned earlier, um, but defeat 50 enemies with Inquisitorious units. If you wanna do it, go for it. I'm fully intending to skip this feat. Um, it doesn't need to be a full squad and you don't need to win. You just need to defeat the units to get it done. Okay, so win 14 battles with no attackers in your squad. This is the one here that I am thinking of going with. I wanted to pick one that wasn't a Galactic Legend because I know a lot of people don't um, necessarily have a ton of them. Um, but Jedi Master Luke is also a really good candidate because he's a tank. So you just take a bunch of Jedi that aren't attackers with him. Um, but Padme, Kenobi, Shakti, Yoda, and C-3PO. None of these are attackers, so they're gonna do really well. Padme is super strong in Conquest, so I absolutely love using her. Um, but I put Yoda here as well because of the stealth feat that's in this sector. You need to gain stealth 40 times and he can steal it off of another team, theoretically. Um, and then you also need to inflict stagger. So you need to attempt to inflict stagger 60 times. So again, I put Sith Empire here because still Sean does it. Um, and this will go towards your Sith Empire wins for your global feat so that you can double tap for that. And you also need to gain stealth 40 times. This is my go-to team for gaining stealth. Uh, Aura lead gives bounty hunter allies who are attackers stealth at the start of battle, including herself. Um, so all of these characters here, doesn't really matter. You can, you can sub in other bounty hunters. It doesn't necessarily need to be these ones. They just have to be attackers. Um, and you don't need to win. You go in and you lose, and then you go in and you lose again. <laughs> um, and you just gain stealth that way. So that's how I like to do it. And then the rest of the um, feats in this sector are winning with certain characters surviving. No Jedi, no Sith, no unaligned force users, the typical, okay? So let's look at sector four. Um, really basic, you need to defeat 50 enemies with Geonosians. So I'm just gonna take a full Geo squad, depending on how rough this is. I'm probably not gonna be able to do this until towards the end of Conquest once I have all my discs applied because my Geos are weaker. Um, but I think it will be doable depending on the uh, enemies that we see in the sector. I'm not foreseeing any major problems. Um, you also need to win 14 battles with a full Galactic Republic team and you need to gain tenacity up 40 times. So uh, gas 501st, this is gonna be Awesome, because you're gonna double dip. You're gonna have your Galactic Republic wins and you're gonna gain tenacity up because of Rex. Um, you could also use Padme teams with Yoda. Any Galactic Republic that you can cycle through, to be honest with you, is gonna get you through this sector really well. And then you need to attempt to inflict Purge 300 times. This is the feat that I am fully intending to cheese. Um, this. I should have changed this. I didn't save the squad properly. Sorry, we're gonna change this right now. I actually want um, Palpatine lead. And I did change this earlier and then I guess I forgot to hit save. Sorry about that. So you want Palpatine lead. Um, I'm thinking mainly for the stun to control the 
teams and then you're going to want three inquisitors and Watt. And the reason why I'm taking Watt here is because I also am planning to pair this with the frenzy tech um, consumable. You don't need to win. <laughs> you just need to attempt to inflict purge 300 times. So I'm going to take that uh, frenzy tech that way, when someone does a special ability, everyone gains 100% turn meter because they all will start the battle with Frenzy. Watt's gonna go first to do his tech move. And all of my characters are gonna gain turn meter and, and start being able to inflict purge. Um, the reason why I want three inquisitors here instead of having fourth and taking one as a four and taking one as a leader is because if you have at least three and you have upgraded their unique abilities that they all share patience, then you're able to also gain purge when characters attack them out of turn um, based off what they do. So I took these ones specifically, um, Ninth Sister to Taunt, because she's gonna be gaining, if she's taunting and people are hitting her, then she's gonna be inflicting purge. Uh, eighth Brother has an, has an AOE uh, purge that I would love to get to use. Um, and Second Sister just happens to be my highest geared one. I fully intend to lose this battle repeatedly because if you use the frenzy tech and you lose or timeout, it doesn't actually consume that consumable. So, right, that's a reminder that you only consume them when you win. Then I intend to go back in and rack up some more purge, go back in, rack up some more purge, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, I'm hoping to find teams with nest teams with Django or Droidica that have damage immunity on them because that's going to be a really great way to rack up the purge and not kill the character by accident though I'm not too sure how many characters I can kill with a gear 8 inquisitor um, but that's what I fully intend to do and I think this feat will be a lot easier to cheese than trying to get 50 kills or 14 wins. And then the other feat I'm skipping here is on the boss, which is to win with a full team of Inquisitors. Can't do it, so I'm skipping it. Okay, so sector five, the last one. You need to defeat 50 enemies with Empire units. I am personally gonna go with Troopers just because they are one of my stronger Empire teams. You can go with any Empire characters though, and it doesn't need to be a full squad. You just need to get the kill with them but I think this is going to be one of the easier ones. Then you need to win 14 battles with a full Inquisitorious squad, so all five of them. I'm skipping that entirely. It's worth 15 key cards, so just keep that in mind. Gain defense up 40 times. This has been a feat for months, and this is the best team to do it with. You want Clone Wars Chewie lead, which I know is ridiculous. Um, you don't want to win. You can lose. It's totally fine. And then I take four tanks with him. These are the four tanks that I have always used. Clone Wars Chewie lead gives defense up to all of his allies and they're gonna keep getting defense up and you can usually get it done in one battle, even when you lose. Um, so throw them in, lose, take your 40 defense up wins, your 15 key cards and move along. <laughs> then you need to attempt to inflict armor shred 20 times. So I just pulled some characters that do inflict armor shred um, Gas obviously being the main one and Cat, Kiati Mundi does, um, which I know a lot of people don't have, but he does do it. Fennec does it and Gideon does it. Gideon would be great because you can plug him into your empire team. So you can double dip there. You can defeat characters and get armor shred at the same time. Um, and then the rest of these here are just winning with certain characters surviving and no Sith, no Jedi, no unaligned force users. So, Sorry for rambling on, but that is pretty much all of these feats in a nutshell. It's kind of just what I'm thinking off the get-go and what I would like to start doing. Um, like I said, it's probably going to change as we get in there and see what's happening. Um, but I think this is the best plan. And based off what I'm intending to skip, um, I will have six key cards that I can keep skipping um, because I'm only skipping a total of 31 so far based off this feat, feat list. Um, so I think it's really doable <laughs> and it looks daunting because there are so many Inquisitorious feats, but it's totally doable. I think we'll be good. And yeah, hopefully this is a good plan to get us started and we have less than two days to prep. So I fully intend to um, come out with some more sector guides once we get in there and started and hopefully
hopefully this is good. If you have other team comps that you are thinking of using, let me know, put them in the comments below, because again, the best way for all of us to get through this together is to just to brainstorm as a whole and share our ideas. And these were just the ones that I came up with right away um, once I saw the list. So that being said, thank you so much for watching guys. I really hope you found it useful. If you did, please let me know below and I will see you probably tomorrow. <laughs> Thanks guys.